Okay, I think we're ready to call this meeting to order. And our first order of business is to read the emergency evacuation procedures. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm may sound. Everyone should exit the building by way of the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you have reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and out of emergency vehicles. In the event of severe weather, in the area the chairperson of the audit committee will determine if there is a need to evacuate to the designated severe weather shelter. If the chairperson recommends the evacuation to the designated severe weather shelter area, everyone should go to the second floor by using the interior staircase. The severe weather shelter area is marked by signage. Please do not leave the shelter until the severe weather has left the area, and also please be mindful of others evacuating as well. Okay, I think next it's time to do our roll call. Madam Chair, you have four members present. You do have a quorum. Okay, then we'll begin to, first order of business will be to, we do have a quorum present. We will set the agenda. Do I have a motion to set the agenda? So moved, Madam Chair. Do I have a second? Ron, if you'll set your, if you'll push your. I'm sorry. I'm and, there you go. Thank you. Okay, we have a second. Now let's take it to a vote, and everyone can vote on their screen with the new software. If you'll hold just one minute and let me. I, I left. It'll the prompt us here shortly. Okay. Madam Chair, you have four yes votes. Okay, the motion passes. The agenda has been set. The next order of business is to approve the minutes of the April 4th, 2016 Audit Committee meeting, as we've already received copies of in our emailed packets. Do I have a motion to accept? So move, Madam Chair. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. If you just... okay. And now we'll be able to vote promptly on your screen if you'll just vote when it comes up. You have four yes votes. Motion carries. The next order of business is public input on the items on the agenda. Do we have anyone from the public who would like to speak at this time? I do not believe we do. So we will move on to new business. Our first order of new business is to hear from the Comptroller's Office relative to the Blount County Audit Report. The findings were none. It's a very good year for us again. I understand that we are one of 12 this year, so there continues to be several others that um, have clear reports. So we'll hear from Mark Trace at this time, and then we'll open up the floor for questions of our auditors. on page 254 if you have that with you if you don't you can look at it later uh, it's the summary of uh, auditors results and the audit for Blount County uh, for 16 the June 30th 2016 year was unmodified which means uh, it met all the requirements um, there was no like as you just mentioned there was no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies were identified uh, the county also qualified as a low-risk auditee for federal programs um, the dollar threshold for federal programs were the audit was $750,000, and we did look at the uh, special education cluster for this past year. Uh, related to the federal awards, there was also no material weaknesses or cynic deficiencies uh, related to those programs as well, and we also had an unmodified opinion. Um, any details related to the financial statements can probably be found in the MDNA section prepared by uh, the finance department. I think that's pages. Uh, 10, uh, 14 through 21 in the audit report. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. So. I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Um, if any of you would like to speak at this time, you can just hit your little button on your microphone and I'll activate. All right, we'll hear from Amy first and then we'll hear from Lee Gowan right behind her. Okay. Um, remind me what the, just the general threshold for materiality was. 
Um, the materiality, since there's so many opinion units, there's a lot of different. So they are all amounts. different. Yeah. I was yeah. wondering about that. Yeah, okay. we have. You'll have one for the government wide level. You have one for each major fund, and you have one for the aggregate remaining. There's also one for the schools funds, since okay. it's a, support, a component unit. So those will vary. I can get those for you. I don't oh, have no. it with me. But I, I was just hoping that they did vary. Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, they, we'll, we'll look at a lot smaller. Uh, materiality amount on the on some of the smaller funds okay. so we don't use the same dollar amount across the okay. board okay any more questions amy no that's all i have okay okay mr gowan it's your turn now okay i've got two or three things uh, okay nothing too major uh how many hours y'all spend on this auto approximately uh i think we budget about 1700 hours 1700 for the, hours. for the audit yeah it's one of our larger one of our larger audits yeah. so and do you hit about 1700 is that coming pretty close uh we're, we were a little less we're probably in the 1400 range okay so we'll we'll, we'll vary we, we hope to try to get it done within within the uh the budget amount but sometimes understand. it does go over depending on what we run into I understand so. uh second question uh and i talked to randy about this yesterday and he i think he shared part of it with you and just so everybody knows uh, on the industrial Devo industrial development board's books, they show a note payable to Blunt County for right. four point eight seven million. Mm -hmm. uh, on Blunt County's books, we show nothing due from the industrial development board. Uh, just to clarify, so everybody understands, I mean, if, if you're looking at the IDB, you go, well, we owe Blunt County. If you look at Blunt County, you wouldn't know that we're owed, or are we owed four point eight seven million by the IDB? Well, there's, there's a footnote disclosure in there. It's not booked on actual financial statements, but there is a footnote disclosure in the report related to that transaction. I, I assume you're talking about the one with, with uh, Maryville, Alcoa, Alcoa and Knoxville. And Knoxville. Yeah. Yeah. I must have missed that. I tried to read everything the other day. Mm -hmm. I went to the website and looked at it online, right. but I must have missed that one. Well, there's there's quite a few pages of footnotes. There's about 80 pages, yeah, so it's easy to, easy to miss. Um, yeah, the, the, the county has never booked that transaction, that five million dollars, because of the uncertainty of when it will materialize. Um, the other, the other issue related to it is, um, it would have to be booked in the general debt service fund, and by booking it in the de general debt service fund, the only mechanism to show the the, the proceeds in or the, the balance would be in your. Uh, as a restricted for debt service retirement, and that would kind of over over inflate that number. That would make you think you've got five million dollars more to meet current invoices, current payments than you actually would have. So uh, the footnote disclosure is the way it's always been disclosed. Uh, I think it goes back to about 2006. It goes back several years. Yeah. And there's never been a payment made on it. There's no payment uh, plan to pay that money back. So uh, you're not the only county that has some of those transactions with the IDB. There's some other counties that we have as well that, that have loaned money or given money to IDBs with no mechanism for them to repay it. So, so if we um, if we get it back someday, we'll get it. We might get it back. Right. right? I get. I, I assume we'll have the same footnote disclosure until it's until it's received. So right. we'll just put that in there. I just want to make everybody aware of that. Right. You ever, I looked at some of the other reports too that went back and forth. A mm -hmm. uh, couple questions on the schools, uh, yeah. cafeteria funds. Do y'all do all the work on those, or do you contract part of that out? That work is all contracted out at the individual school level. Our responsibility begins once the money reaches the county trustee or is deposited into the checking account. So um, there's about 14 procedures, 15 procedures that has to be done by the CPA farms that are contracted with the counties to do those. We do go out and review those procedures and make sure they've been done. On, on each of those on each of those counties who, who did that for this past year the uh, firm that which i mean who did the work for you it's one is it okay is it, is it iob ingram over holton b yeah is that it okay, okay. yeah okay and then uh, follow up to that question the uh, activity funds and all the school systems those are you all don't audit any of those no we do not do those either those would be contracted by the same firm normally Ingram, okay. Ingram over Holton Moon, I think you said. Is there any mention about activity funds in the report at all? No. Okay. No. They're all completely separate. Okay. They, I don't know if they do a separate report on those. Most of the time, the CPA firm will do a report on those. I don't know if they bring it to full commission or if they take it to the school board. They probably present it at school board meeting. They're not going to bring it to commission. Okay. It's probably at school board meeting, then they'll, they'll issue their report, present their report. 
I'm wondering, as an, this isn't for you really, just as, as an audit committee, we probably ought to look at that audit report too, I would think. I agree. We that might be something we can put on next month's agenda, or the following month in June. Because you, you will be surprised how much money goes through those oh, activity yes. funds a lot. and the balances that they run, especially mm -hmm. in a big school. Uh -huh. A high school especially. High school. Booster clubs and things of that nature. Yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a, lot of, a lot of money goes through those. So. I think. I think it would. I think it would behoove us to look at those audit. That audit report also. Is that something we could get from you? Do you have those audit reports, or do we need to contact Ingram Overholt and Bean? Uh, you could either contact them, or you could probably contact the school board. Will Somebody do. Somebody over the school department should have a copy of those reports. So. Thank you. Now we don't. We don't have any re review responsibility over the activity funds, just the cafeterias, because it flows into our report. Some of the procedures we have to do for single audit requirements. Uh, is to look at things at the school level and to mm -hmm. look at meal components and things of that nature. That's what we have the county's contract with the CPA fire to perform for us. So, because there's no way, we, we don't have the staff to go out to air one fourth of every school Understand. in the is state of Tennessee. Understand. <laughs> is it still 20, is that still the rule of 25% mm -hmm. code? 25%. Okay, that's what it used to be. Yeah. I used to be in public accounting. I've been okay. retired for a few years, but right. uh, I've done a few schools in my day. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, 25 percent. 25 percent. And as a low-risk oddity, is it 25 percent coverage there now that you have? To uh, 20 percent. 20. They dropped it this year to 20. Okay. High risk is 40. Okay. Hmm. And they raised the threshold to the 750. Okay. As well this year. Okay. So. Back back in my day, it was 300 thousand. That's what it was till last year. Okay. They raised well, it. I, they raised it for six. You guys like that, don't you? I would have liked it. Oh yeah. Higher threshold. Yeah. yeah. Well, we like the higher threshold, and we like the low risk oddities. I heard that. It makes a big difference in the amount of work we put in single audit. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up and be quiet. You've answered, okay. my, you've answered my <laughs> questions. Fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Lee. Ron, do you have any questions for them? Okay. Okay. There's only one thing I just want you to do, just so we have it on record. Can you just go through briefly the audit process that you all do from start to finish, from preliminary work all the way to the end, and kind of okay. just give us a feel for what all is entailed so we have a good idea for what those hours are spent on? Okay. Well, we'll start the audit process in um, March or April of the preceding year, and we'll start, uh, we'll come in, we'll do some interim work, either at clerk audits, the clerk reports, we go ahead and look at some of their financial statements. Um, we go ahead and do some testing, we do some single audit work. Uh, we try to get as much done before June 30 as we humanly possible. Uh, we have our training sessions in there as well, but we try to get, um, try to get as much done as we, we can because we have, in East Tennessee, we have 21 reports we have to get out and uh, they have to be submitted to national by the end of February for them to review and get released. So we're, we're doing three and four audit reports a month uh, starting about September. So then after that, we'll come back in, depends on which audit's first, where you fall kind of in the audit cycle. Uh, Blount County's kind of got their little niche of where they fall. They're, we're usually here in October, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and finish the audit procedures then, issue the report, uh, get it to Nashville by um, first of December, and then hopefully out of, out of Nashville before Christmas or around the holidays. So, and then we'll start back again after we finish up the last ones. We'll start back again at the interim work again. So, sounds good. Do you know how many weeks you're usually in the field on site here in Blount County? Mm -hmm. Quite a few. I don't know if we can actually put it in weeks. We may be here That's a day okay. or two a week and then be gone for a few weeks and then be back. Kind of depends on everybody's schedule, not only ours, but also on, on the different office holders. We kind of give them a heads up that we're coming. We don't want to come in and they're going to some training or something like that so we try to work with them as best as possible so. does your staff rotate i know it can sometimes is this a year that it rotated i know you were new last year you'd been around nine months i think this mm -hmm. this time last year when the audit had right. wrapped up uh we do have a new staff member that we did put out here last year kind of training her getting her familiar with it so we can kind of ease her in but we try to we do try to rotate as much as possible but we we had to hire uh, four new staff members last year, so we we're kind of short-handed. So it was good that everybody was familiar with the audit. We didn't want to be changing everybody out. At Understood. One time. So, where do you we'll, guys? I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead and finish. That's okay. But we try to rotate as much as possible. But we we're kind of limited sometimes on our drives and our location of our of our auditors. So, talk about training. What type of training are you all required to do for us each year? or all the audits in general as a staff? I'm assuming okay. it's different levels of training. Uh, it, it, for the most part, everybody gets the same training. Uh, some of the newer staff will go to Nashville for some different training, uh, just some familiarization with governmental accounting. But we have our, our Yellow Book training, our GASB updates. Um, after the legislature gets finished, we'll have some updates on what the legislature passed, uh, deal with some of that. And then we have our 
ethics training, things that are required for the CPAs. So we'll have our normally required to have 40 hours a year. Some years we'll have more than that. We'll have 60 or 80 hours in a year sometimes, depending on what's going on. Are there any upcoming large, forgive me, I haven't been auditing in quite a while. Mm -hmm. Are there any upcoming changes in the near future that we need to be made aware of that are big changes in the way the report's going to look? No, nothing really there. The only thing that may change might be some OPEB presentations. Okay. Uh, we, they brought in OPEB uh, probably about five or six years ago and then we did pensions and then they're going to bring pensions in more in line with the OPEB presentation. But that I think for a county, Blount County South probably be for 18 or 19. Okay, so we're still a ways out from mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That sounds good. Is there anything new we as a committee need to be doing that's changed from this time last year we need to be made aware of? No, no new requirements in the statute, just that you have at least an annual meeting, make your report to the full commission, and provide a method for county folks to make uh, complaints either through yourself or through the hotline, state okay. hotline, to report fraud, waste, and abuse. And sounds I think good. this committee selected last year to do the state hotline. Yes, so. we did. And you don't foresee any reason to change that, any need whatsoever. No. No. Okay, that sounds good. Any more questions? Okay, there being no further business, as far as reviewing the audit report, do I have a, any other business that we need to address? Okay. We need to make a motion to accept the, accept the audit report. Do I have a motion to accept the audit report? So moved, Mr. Chair. Madam Chair. <laughs> Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, let's all vote here in just a moment. Okay. Madam Chair, you have four yes votes. Motion passes. Okay, we've got a couple other things we need to do. Uh, the first thing will be to set our next meeting and the purpose of our next meeting, um, which I hope to do June 15th at 6.15 and it'll precede the regular county commission meeting. It will not be a long meeting. The order of business will be to review the policies and procedures that Blunt County put in place um, earlier, well, this past fall. Um, so we will take a look at those. And then the next thing we need to do is I believe Ron French would like to have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity as a member of this committee to commend our county government, all the departments, and everybody that was involved in, uh, in this audit because being one of 12 counties out of 95, with no findings I think is exceptional. And this is not the first year that we've gone through this with no findings. So my comment is we appreciate what the departments are doing and you keep up the good work. Please do. Any further business? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? I second that. Okay, let's all vote here momentarily. Thank you very much. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Sure, sweet.